Hey guys, so congratulations on getting this far into the course. You should now have got all of the skills necessary to be able to complete the rest of the course. If you find there's anything that you don't understand, then I'd recommend you go back to the Intro to 3D section and just look for the topic that you're struggling with and that should sort you out. Alright, so let's get started modelling the robot. Now, it doesn't matter if your robot looks exactly the same as mine. You can make the pieces look however you like. I would recommend though that you model the same number of pieces just to make it a little bit easier when we start rigging it later on. All right, so let's get started. Shift A, the cube. I'll give it a few subdivisions by pressing Control 4 and I'll apply the subdivision as well. So I'll go into sculpt mode and then I'll open up the end panel and turn on symmetry on the X axis. If I move things around now, uh, it's symmetrical. And I'm just randomly pulling vertices around so I get some sort of inspiration. You use the F key to change the size of the brush. Well, maybe it's starting to look a bit like a torso. So I think I want to make it a lady robot. Let me make sure symmetry is still on. We'll pull out some boobs. So let's fill these out a little bit, make them a little bit less uh, saggy. You can see we're starting to get a bit low resolution now, and it's making it difficult to get a good shape. So what we'll do, we'll go into the Tools menu, and see we've got this remesh section. Change the voxel size by pressing R, and it will give us a visual representation of how big those uh, voxels are going to be when we've finished. So I don't want it to be too fine at this stage, maybe about here. And then we can press Remesh, or Control r for shortcut, and that will remesh it, and give us a more even distribution of smaller faces. But the only problem is, because the new faces are so much smaller than the old ones, we can quite clearly see the shape of those larger faces that were there before we remeshed. So what we need to do is smooth these out a little bit. We can go into the Mesh filter, and we'll turn this to smooth. And I'll just, just move it across until it's smoothed out a little bit. And then we can continue doing whatever we want to do to the model. So I'm going to make these boobs a bit more inviting. See if we can get something a little bit like Kelly LeBrock. And if you understand that joke, well done for still being alive. Uh, I have I have actually seen, I know it's probably not obvious, but I have seen this out of boobs before. <laughs> Let's try the crease brush. And I think this is a good time to point out that no matter how bad your sculpting skills are, you can see here, you know, I'm not doing a great job, but you can still always end up with a really nice result, just as long as you keep at it. So don't give up, even if it's looking rubbish at the moment, just keep going. As you can see here, mine are, mine are currently looking pretty bad, but as we've already seen, it's going to look really nice when we've finished. I don't want it to be a robot, so I don't mind having a few of these sharp edges. In fact, let's try the crease brush around here. I'm just using the grab, the crease, the draw, and the inflate brushes now to go around the object and just make modifications until I get these bosoms correct. I think this tutorial is starting to reveal more than I wanted about my own psyche. I think I forgot to turn gravity on. Let's get these drooped down a little bit. Oh dear, at this point I'm starting to wonder if I should rename this section of the course to how to model a boxer's nose. There we are, that'll do, that'll do nicely. So what I want to do at this stage is start making it more robotic and that's going to be done by cutting out really um, sharp edges, sharp shapes. So we're going to click on the face set tool, which is this one. We're going to draw a shape that we want to cut out. So I'm making sure I've still got the symmetry turned on. So 
something like this. And then I'm going to do shift and just draw around the edges of it to smoothen that border. Or alternatively, instead of drawing around the edges, I could have gone into the mesh filter and just turned this into relaxed face sets. Then it'll do them all at once. It's probably the easier way to do it. And what I'll do then is hover my mouse over the part that I don't want. So this one, H. And I'm going to go into edit mode now. Press A and, and then X and then choose to delete the faces. Come back out. And then you can see we've got a really nice smooth hole cut into the side of the object. And then we'll go back into sculpt mode. And we need to unhide the object by pressing Alt H. And you can draw um, shapes. It doesn't have to be, you can draw boxes on there. It doesn't have to be hand drawn. It would be nice if you could have different shapes. I don't think you can. We've got a lasso option, I suppose. Let's try that. That actually goes all the way through. So that's not what I want. Although that could be interesting. So I'm going to do a relax on this one. H again. To select all these ones. And then I'll go into edit mode. And I'm going to select the bottom piece by hovering the mouse over it and pressing L. To select the linked faces. I'm going to do X for this one. So delete the uh, faces there. And for these two, L, L, I'm going to do P and separate the selection. And I'll go back into object mode. And now I've got different parts of the model. So I've got this part here, we've got this part, and we've got the hole in the bottom that we've just cut out. Make sure we select this part, the, the uh, boob part, in sculpt mode. Alt H to unhide everything. And I'll just do a few more. And then we use the relaxed face sets function of the mesh filter brush to make them smooth. And then we'll hover over the rest of the object and press Shift H this time. And then we'll go into edit mode, press A to select it all. We can either separate it or we can delete it, whichever you prefer. I'm going to separate it again. And then you see we've got this model. So let's have a look what we can do. We'll go into Cycles Render Mode, and we'll go into uh, Shader Editor. And set yourself up with the HGRI World Environment, just like we did earlier in the course. Any one's fine, but I'd recommend an outdoor one, because we're going to be using the robot in an outdoor scene towards the end of the course. Give it a new material. We'll probably make it a glossy white robot. Maybe go with a reddish colour for this part. And then this one, maybe give this a black gloss. And for these parts here, maybe go with a white gloss. I think actually I will delete, I will hide those. Let's get rid of those. I think for this, rather than just being a black, we'll go with a metallic. I'll make the backdrop grey by turning off the scene world. And we'll turn on smooth shading now as well. I think we'll make this uh, set of a red. Let's go with a. I think we'll go with just a white. And maybe make this a bit less glossy. Okay, so that's the torso. I do need to cut out the neck area though, so let's go sculpt mode again. Make sure we've got the middle part selected. I'm going to draw another one. Now mesh filter. Smooth that out. H. Edit mode. A. I'm going to delete these ones. So X. F. Now, if we look at the topology, it's not great. So it's not something we could use in a game engine, for example. It's just too, well, maybe in Unreal 5 we could, but uh, what we'd probably want to do is reduce this topology as much as we can, and then we can do things like animate much easier. I, I can't be bothered. I hate manually retopologizing. It's the most tedious thing in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So what I like to do instead is actually use quad remesher. So quad remesher is an add-on, 
Uh, but you don't need to use this. You can use the inbuilt one. We've got the same thing down here in the data panel uh, under quad. And then you just choose quad flow remesh. And you basically tell it how many faces you want, if it's symmetrical, uh, and everything else is quite self-explanatory. Um, so you can use this one if you want. It'll try and do a similar thing to what the quad remesher will do. This one's three pounds per month, uh, minimum three months. So it's, I think it's about 12 pounds. It's very good value, in fact. I'm not affiliated, by the way. And at the time of recording, there is actually a 30-day, a one-month free trial. And all you've got to do is go to exercise.com forward slash quad remesher, click on download trial version, drop your email address in, and they'll send you the download link to get that free trial. Uh, you don't have to put your credit card details in or anything like that. So I'd certainly recommend it because it will make remeshing much faster and give you a better result than the one that's built into Blender currently. So uh, yeah, definitely recommend you get the trial. And you don't have to do this step at all if you don't want to. You know, you can leave it with the current topology if you'd prefer. Um, but anyway, I'm going to use this one because it's faster and it gives better results. And all I'll do is select the model. Let's just give this a uh, name. So chest. And we'll set the quad count. 5,000 should be fine. And just choose to remesh. And there we go. You can see we've now got a much less dense mesh. And the topology, the actual flow of the polygons, is following the actual shape of the model quite nicely as well. So I'll do that for the rest of it as well. And if we go back into rendered mode, you see that visibly, there's not really much difference. If you do notice certain parts have become flattened out, then you might need to add a subdivision modifier. You can see that's going to round it out a bit for us. What you can do at this point, if you want to, is just select all the parts you've got and do a Control-J, and that's going to join them together into one model so that you don't have to keep messing about with individual modifiers for both. Next thing we can do is add a solidify modifier to give it a little bit of thickness. If we zoom in, we can see what that's done, giving us a bit of solidity to the model, which is what we want. We'll put the solidify modifier above the subdivision, then the edges that the solidify creates will be smoothed as well. And I'm going to set the solidify model to only rim, and that will make it much faster because it's not got an inside, which is fine. And there we are, and this will give us a nice sort of effect as well, where they join. Whereas if we turn this off, you'll see they're just flat together, and it's not very interesting. So turn that back on, and it gives us that really nice uh, three-dimensional effect on the model.